I wanted to take a closer look at the generative sequencing aspects of the Deluge, specifically for this most recent firmware 4.0. It's such an amazing way of quickly coming up with new ideas, of generating musical phrases that are inspiring and different from what you thought you had in mind, and it can help, um, at least for me, it, it jogs my inspiration, so it makes me want to play along with other instruments, be it you know a bass or a guitar or drums or piano, whatever it is. Um, and, and it's a, a cool way of playing along with yourself and feeling like there's some added creativity and something unexpected going on. So uh, that's what I want to do in this video. I'm going to start with powering on the Deluge. It takes me directly into a default synthesizer. I'm going to override this and create a brand new one. So if I press Shift and Synth, New, and then Shift and uh, Oscillator Type, it should say Square, which is what we're after for this one. Uh, square oscillator waves have this nice ability of um, changing the width if you change that parameter. So the PW, the pulse width, if I tap that one and then tie it to the random uh, mod source and dial that up a little to say, I don't know, 9 or 10. Um, and if I play this, it will still be a little bit bright, but you can hear how the sound evolves over time. Oh, I need to turn it up some more. Um, PW, random. Let's turn it up to 15. And you can hear with every note press, it changes how the sound uh, comes across, the timbre of, of the oscillator. That's a good place to start. I'm also going to do something similar for the release of the envelope. So how the, the sound is generated right now, it's like an on-off. If we change the envelope, we can change the attack, decay, uh, sustain, and release. And the release specifically, I think is fun to play with. So if I dial this up, hear how that changes. I can also tie the release to the random and dial that up to 12. Now you can hear that some of them are short and some of them are more protracted. Um, I'm gonna reduce the sustain and the decay just because I like that slightly stringier sound and the attack I'm just gonna dial that up a little bit not too much. That sounds pretty cool already. I also want to do something similar with the uh, low pass frequency. So if I dial this down, you can hear what that does. I can also turn this into something that is affected with every note press. Shift random, tie it into a value of 14, for instance. Let's go a little higher, 20. Now you can hear there's quite a bit of variation with every key press. I think that's a good place to start, but we can also add maybe a little bit of uh, delay. So if we add the um, delay amount, uh, yes, here, so shift amount, turn that, we can add it to uh, the LFO, for instance, and dial that depth up to 10. Maybe I can dial it up some more. I think that ought to do it. Um, let's add some reverb. If I click this golden encoder, I can cycle between small, small, medium, and large. I want the large one, and I'm gonna dial it up pretty high. And I also wanna add um, a randomization to the, the panning of the sound. So shift, um, master pan, this one here, uh, and tie that to the random. Set a nice depth. And you can hear that move around a little in the stereo field. Now there are lots of parameters that are uh, evolving and changing over time uh, in a randomized way. I'm just gonna turn down the, the cutoff a little because I think it's a little bit too bright and too much treble in the sound. And now I'm going to record something. It doesn't really matter as long as I'm within the, the scale, but um, I'm going to record a couple of notes uh, across, I don't know, four or eight bars. Let's see where we take this. Uh, 
you know what, it feels like it's too fast. I'm going to undo that one and I'm going to dial the tempo down to something like 84 and I'm going to turn the tempo off just so I, um, sorry, turn the metronome on so I know where we are in the, in the bar, in the phrase. shift and the sideways scroll bar it right there we go we have a length of two bars and this one if we play this back it will obviously play from left to right the playhead starting here and then going through the, the two um, the two bars uh, with this most recent update if I press shift and the fifth one on the top row the one that doesn't have any label I can cycle between forward reverse or ping pong I'm gonna set it to ping pong and that way, obviously, the, the playhead goes from the left to the right, goes all the way back, and then back and forth, like a ping pong game. <laughs> but um, where this gets interesting is when you start to affect the length of uh, the different phrases. So if I press shift and any one note, it doesn't um, audition the note, so I can do it in silence. When this is held down, I can turn um, the sideways scroller thing, and you can see the length of that individual um, track note is changed relative to the others. And if I do that for all of them, make some of them longer, some of them shorter, um, while keeping that ping pong play mode active, it can change how long each phrase is for each note, which obviously creates something that's very generative, organic, unexpected, uh, polyrhythmic. So if I play this back now, let's see what it sounds like. I'm going to turn the metronome off. Not only does it sound pretty uh, good already to me, but it's it's fun to look at this, seeing them bounce around. It's kind of like when you watch those pendulum videos, when you see the balls being in sync and then just chaos and then back in sync, something like that. Um, I'm going to make the, the release a little bit longer because it felt a little bit too short, maybe, on average. I also want to affect the probability of each note, so if I press and hold each note and just turn this encoder down, you can see that it's changing the value, the probability, and if I do that for all of them, it will be a lot more unexpected when notes will be played. Uh, it might feel a little bit sparse in the beginning, but we're going to fill it in by having a bass register as well. So let's add a new track, something very similar, shift synth to create a new synth. I'm going to change the oscillator type, so if I click oscillator 1 type, I'm going to set this to a saw instead. That's what they sound like if I turn down the low pass filter. Uh, I think that would work, and then shift frequency, um, shift LFO 1, and so that means it will be affected by uh, LFO1, but I additionally want it to be affected by the random. So just a little, I don't know, six, sure. And you can hear how fast the LFO is changing, and I don't want that. So I'm going to press shift and LFO1 rate, turn this down to something like a nine or a ten. The depth is a little bit too great now, so frequency, LFO1. Turn that down to six. I'm going to add some delay. And do something similar with the envelope. So I'm going to change the release. Tie it to the random. And already we're seeing some interesting shifts happening. Uh, shift master pan. 
sorry, uh, master a pen and then tying it to the random. That's the important step. Okay. Let's increase that a little. Let's uh, play along a little and just see if we can find a couple of nice notes that we like. And I'm going to do that in the isomorphic keyboard layout. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to play a couple of notes, see what it sounds like. So we have a simple ARP pattern. Turn up the delay a little more. Add some reverb. Then uh, I'm gonna add a kit track with a kick, just a preset, the 808. I'm gonna turn the volume down, all the way down. So you can't hear it, but it's still playing. The, the notes are still there, but they're just not audible. But they will use um, these input notes from the kick track to act as a trigger for volume ducking of the sign chain. So if I just tap and hold anywhere here, select the sidechain and turn that up a little. Hopefully, you can hear how, how that's being affected. It's a little thumpier. It's a little too fast, I'm gonna slow it down a little. I'm going to press effect entire and I'm going to add a little bit of chorus, so the depth one, and add some more delay. And I'm going to change the cutoff a little in that initial track that we made. If I go back into the kit track, I can use another function, uh, which is a new one that I really like. And that's the Euclidean sequencing thing. So if I press uh, anywhere on a note and press and turn the up and down encoder, you see how it starts adding more notes and they're equidistant, uh, spread out evenly. But this doesn't necessarily sound all too interesting. So I'm going to start by turning it down a little, adding a little bit of low pass filter. But then in addition to that, I'm going to press shift frequency uh, tie that to the random for the low pass filter and by turning this up. You can hear how it's 
affected randomly by this, which is pretty fun. I'm going to turn down the volume a little, the hi-hat track, and additionally I'm going to add a little bit of delay just for the, the hi-hats. And uh, why not, a little bit of bit reduction too. Actually, maybe I can tie that to to the random as well. So, sorry, um, the decimation. I mean. Tying that to the random. Nope, to LFO one. Nope. Okay, I guess <laughs> I'm not tying that to anything. Ah, uh, still sounds good. Turn it down a little. So. Um, there you have it. This is essentially the, the generative sequencing that I was excited about sharing. As you can see, it's such an amazing way of creating very, very simple um, musical passages that don't sound anything like the originally inputted notes. And they can spark new ideas. Uh, and, and like I mentioned, if you want to sequence external gear with this, what an amazing way of just trying new things, finding new ideas, or um, playing along with yourself uh, in unexpected ways and, and learning a little um, a little bit about phrasing, melodies, basses, bass notes, whatever it may be. I'm gonna let this play out while I just add a couple of tweaks. Thank you for watching. Uh, the past couple of videos I posted have been received really well, which is obviously incredibly motivating for me. Thank you for watching, thank you for liking, thank you for your comments. Uh, if you have any questions around anything, don't be shy, reach out, uh, ask me. I'm pretty responsive in the comment section and uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.